Good morning and welcome to Family Sunday here at House of Power Outreach. Thank you for joining us this morning for our service today online. Uh, we're going to uh, do a couple quick announcements. One one huge announcement. Today we start our 21-day mid-year fast. And man, you put your dukes up. It's time to fight, baby. And so we are believing God for this is the year of healing, year of restoration, the year of just complete complete and total restored uh, people to the, to the kingdom of God, reconciliation, uh, any form of healing and deliverance, it's happening now. And so join in. Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of this corporate fast. And, and we're just thankful for the God, for God, for the opportunity uh, that we get to stand in faith and agreement, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones and friends and for the lost. And, you know, with all that they're trying to claim for this month, we're claiming it Jesus month. This is the day the Lord has made. We will, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so it is God's day every day. And so we're going to pray, and then we're going to enter in uh, to the service of the word. Dear Heavenly Father, I just praise you and thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for the kingdom, Father. We just pray we lift up our, our, our blessed friends, Lord God, and that they are healed. Thank you for Fred being home and, and Joe continually getting better, Johnny getting better, Carrie getting better. We just thank you, Lord God. We see the deliverance. We see the healing. Thank you for Nancy getting better, Lord God. We just thank you for the opportunity. No, no greater love than this than we lay down our lives for our friends. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. I pray that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, I want to talk to you about um, delivered, not broken. And there is a difference, right? When God sends you, man can't stop you. Praise God for that. And as we enter into this time, and especially with 21 Day Fast, it's, this is a part where God is delivering us and delivering us to be deliverers. And so man can't break you. Don't let a man, don't let a human feeling, a human thing stop you uh, from what God is doing and he's taking you to deliverance. Um, and so we go to John chapter 19, verse 32 through 37. We're at the cross and and uh, Jesus has been crucified. It says, then came the soldiers to break the legs of the, of, of the first and of, of, of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was, uh, he was dead already and they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side forwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture said, they shall not look on him whom they pierced. And so you go back and you look at the scripture. If it's ever a time, and this is where we got so many, it just it amazes me or people are trying to sidestep what the Bible says and say it's not for, listen, if they really, really thought that they could change the word, this was the perfect time. He's dead on the cross. This verse that they're talking about, that a bone should not be broken, was written in Psalms chapter 34 and verse 20. Okay, if you're the atheist out here, you're the you're, you're out here, you go, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this right now. They said his bone can be broken. He's dead. He can't defend himself. Break the bone. You can't because it's the spirit of God protecting the word of God. It's always been the spirit of God protecting the word of God. No matter what man put the pen to the paper, it was God that put the spirit in the man to put the pen in the paper. God wrote it. God wrote it. Man can't change it. And you got to understand that or you're going to get yourself broken when God wants you to be delivered. And then as part of that piece is that they had a shot to stop, to make the Bible untrue. This was their best shot, but you can't because it's God the, fun, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And all the Spirit's like, man, you ain't breaking anything. I am God. You can't change this. I'm the one that put this down. You can't make this change. You can't make this go away. I am God. And so when we look at that and we think about that, they can't break Jesus. That means they can't break you. And, and listen to this, the soldiers didn't get to kill Jesus because the scriptures were filled that his bones couldn't be broken. And even greater, he was because he was delivered by God. When God brings you to deliver a message, and even you maybe have to deliver a message to family members, deliver a message to someone around you, maybe you got friends, there are, time, there are things that are going to come to try and break you, but you shall not be broken. Your message is going to come forward. 
the call, the walk, the, the thing that God has called you to do, that people can't break you. Your message shall not be broken. What God brings to deliverance, no man can kill. I think that's, that's huge right there because the word is trying to be, they're trying to kill the word, but you and I, my friend, they can't kill what God has brought us to deliver. God called us to deliver, preach the word in season and out and, and go out there that no man can kill it because God brought us to deliver it. Speak that word, speak that truth. You don't have to add anything to it. Don't go along with this world. Don't go along with the culture. Speak the word. Don't break yourself away from the truth. Let the word of God come forth because God has delivered you to deliver it. And so that's one of our powerful things that where God is doing that, God will move us away from people that are trying to kill us from his deliverance. This is about relationships. Yeah, people won't go to church, won't serve God, won't, won't, you know, move away from that. They're keeping you from a deliverance. They're keeping you from being a deliverer. Because now you're breaking into things and breaking, or let me say you're breaking away from the things of God. And now you're doing something that's outside of God because God said it should not be broken. And so we're going to be able to put those things in place. If we ignore God's deliverance, we will end up facing the wrath of man. And usually that is us coming against ourselves. So God's, you know, again, if we go back to talk about relationships or we talk about things that God says here, I'm de deliver, I'm, I'm trying to deliver you so that you don't end up being broken. Many times people have quit going to church, quit serving God because they stayed in something God was trying to deliver them from. And then they ended up being broken because of what they stayed into when they knew God didn't call them to. So God will move you in a place to where you can be the, the deliverer the, and bring deliverance. Yeah, I, I see this even with students. You can tell we're students who have been caught up in the web of a, of a parent who refused to walk in the deliverance of God and became broken. Now the kid's broken. And you have to kind of walk through and break those curses that have been put upon them. So we want to get to the point to where we're walking in the deliverance of God. We have to ask the question that if the enemy is giving so much work to break in our attention, to walk in God's best, there is a deliverance he knows that will come from us being faithful to God. Now, he knows that, that you are about to turn around something that has been in your family for years. You're about to turn around a behavior, a habit. You know, uh, I, you know you, you, you're about to, about to do something. I make sure it says winning habit. You're about to start turning wins into things that used to be lost. He knows that. And if he can get you to compromise your values and compromise your standards, he will get you to lower the bar. And then instead of being delivered, uh, you'll be under a struggle. And so we want to let, let him know that, no, we're going to stay faithful to God because I know I got family, I got children, I got grandchildren, I got great nephews, great nieces. I got all these people that, that are needing to get through, including myself, mind you, that needs to get through this point of, of hearing from God. In hearing from God. Now, again, you can pray, I want to be delivered, I want to be delivered. But if you're still not letting deliverance happen where God is trying to deliver you away from something so you don't become broken, that deliverance can't happen when you're under the broken covering. And that's the covering of brokenness. And so you have to come out and say, God, here, here I am. Here I am. Heal me. We'll get to that verse later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, God expects us all to walk in deliverance that comes from prayer and, and to be so deep in God that nothing can break us from his will. So now as we get ready to enter into this 21 day fast and, 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 and that nothing can break us from the will of God, nothing, not hunger, not, not, uh, not distraction, not fatigue, not whatever. It can't break us from the will of God. We hunger and thirst for his righteousness, not for food, not for that stuff, for his righteousness. Let that be my meal. Let, go ahead and pray that. God, let righteousness be my meal. Let it be my drink. Let it be my everything today. And Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I that live, but it's Christ living me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Now think about that. Now Jesus was, it was told that his bones wouldn't be broken. Guess what? If I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live the life I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. That means I'm living this life. That means I have every power not to be broken from the will of God, from the call of God, from the mission of God. I have every right to stand and keep my focus on praying for my children, praying for my finances, praying for the body of Christ, praying over this world. I have every right to stand there and not be broken. 
And so we live in that. And, and that is the part of us that we have to understand. He didn't just do it for us. He did it through us. And he did it in the point of, and obviously, you know, he did it for us, but through us in the sense of, he said, he come inside of us to live inside of us and dwell in us. And therefore, we can walk in this. It is not impossible for you to be able to pray daily. It is not impossible for you to worship daily. It is not impossible for you to uh, give praise daily. It is not impossible for you to be a blessing. You can do this. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8, it says, Also, I heard the, verse, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Again, one of the most powerful things. God is not going to drag you along to do his will because if he drags you into it, the enemy will drag you out of it. He'll call you into it. He'll speak to you. He'll give you words. There's, there's a level of conviction. But if you refuse and don't want to be the I will, uh, God is not uh, going to drag you in. He's making us identify, right? Here I am. Here I, here am I. And who was Jesus said, I am. I mean, God said, I am that I am. And so we say, here am I, meaning here am, you are, I am that I am. I want to be submitted to everything that you have for my life. Send me. Send me. And it would do this too. And even in this 21-day fast, we're, we're, no one's fighting anyone or making anyone or dragging them. You got to do this. We're saying, man, it, it should be something you want to do. It should be something you want to be a blessing in. But if it's not, it's not going to be a fight. It's not going to be an argument. We're going to move forward with what God has called us to do, just like anyone should. Um, and so God has want those willingness. So listen to this. The difference between being sent by God and just going because we want it to go is in what lines up with the word of God. So you can tell wherever people are and whatever they're doing in their life, does it line up with the word of God? Because the only way God can send you is he sends you according to his word. If it's not according to his word, you're not sent by God. You just went because you wanted to go. In the part of lined up with an unbreakable word will produce an unbreakable bond with God and his call for our life. And so again, the bonding with God is bonding with his word. And if the word cannot be broken, the bond cannot be broken. You know, it, 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 is, it is part of that. And that, that's how we are supposed to marry, you know, an unbreakable word, the word, the vows. And then that creates an unbreakable bond. And it, you don't fall out of love with it. You don't fall out of love. You know, you don't fall. You, you hear in people today say some of the craziest things. But if you break away from the from the word, the bond of, of that passion is going to lose some, some uh, momentum. And so we want to get back on that with God. How strange is it for God to ask a question at all? Ask a question. Why is God asking a question? Whom shall I send? Well, how strange is that? Well, you know, God is, is such a gentleman. And he asked the question, whom shall I send? Well, how strange is that? What does God wonder about? What questions would he have? What does God not know? But God was asking for a person because God wants to reach the world. And he wants to reach it through willing people. We know God knows everything. When God asked Adam, where are you? It wasn't that God didn't know. He wanted Adam to know. He wanted Adam to recognize. He wanted Adam to verbally say out loud where he was so he can start moving from where he is. I think it is a call for us. We verbally know where we are. We're in a world that is sick. So we're going to move from here. We're going to believe God from here and say, God, we thank you for your strength in our lives to, to go forward. So he says, but you got to be willing got to be willing. It isn't that God doesn't know who these people are. It is that God is waiting for ready hearts to reveal themselves, right? Psalms 51.10 says this. It says, create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit, return unto me the joy of thy salvation. It is about that joy of, of salvation, Salvation. So, Pastor Man, we're, we're you know we're we're getting into this. We're fasting. There's, there's a joy. There's a as we talked about the band plowing last week. That's your treat. That's what you're looking at. You're gonna keep your rows straight. You gotta have something you're looking at. There's a joy. There's a pursuit of the will of God. A pursuit of the joy of God. And, and in that pursuit, there's the happiness of hope that begins to reveal itself in our hearts. Look at this. This is another great verse. Isaiah chapter one. 
uh, verse 19 and 20 says this, is if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall devour with, you shall, de you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord had spoken is eating the good of the land. You don't have to settle for scraps. He, he, uh, the prodigal son it caught himself in a place where he wanted to walk away from the covering of his father, and he ended up eating scraps. I think a lot of times when we get from under God's covering, we're we're eating scraps and calling it faith and calling it ministry and calling it growth and calling it. Listen, you don't have to eat scraps. Get in the willingness of God. Serve God. Get in that part of God. That's what God sees. There's so much good to be had during this season of fasting. And it is the power of wanting uh, to do that. So expo wanting to do it so that exposing us to so much hope, we hunger to finish. It is that wanting to that, that exposes us to so much hope that we hunger to finish. Yes, you're going to get hungry. Yes, you're going to go through those times where you're like, man, you know, to, listen, remember the finish. Write down what you're believing God to do. I gave you names at the beginning of this uh, this, this program of people that you can put at the end of the pray for them. Let that be your focus. Let that be your focus for them to be completely well, completely healed. Let, let that be your focus. If you don't have anything, I, I, I struggle to believe nobody doesn't have anything, but if you don't, we got some folks that you can have on the end for and that you'll fight for and that you'll keep your diligence and your willingness for those people. And so we begin to go through that point of that hunger. In Hebrews, the word willing means to breathe after and when God becomes as important as our next breath. That's when we know we're on it. Yeah, um, I think it's Eric Thomas talks about a guy who wanted to be rich and he ran into this, um, wanted to be successful. He ran into this old man who was a very successful man. And the guy goes to meet him at this place at 4 a.m. in the morning. So the guy shows up in a suit and they're at the beach. And he thinks he's going to a business meeting. He got him at the beach. The old man takes him out and walks him into the water in his suit and start holding his head down. And, and then he holds it down for a while and he brings it back up. The guy's struggling, struggling, pushes his head back down, struggling, struggling, pushes his head back down, struggling, struggling. That third time he pushes his head back down, and struggling, struggling. The guy was scrambling, scrambling. And the guy said, now, now, when you want to be as successful as you were wanting that last breath that you just took, that's when you can know that you're going to make it. I want it so bad. I want for the will of God to happen in our lives so strong so strong. I want healing. I want deliverance. I want the hope. I want I want people to be saved, born again, set free I, for God, for God to be glorified in this world. And so we'll be talking about the promises. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, before this verse, Adam was a living being, but he didn't become a living soul till God breathed in him. And there's the air, there's the breath, there's the thing. This is why we need to be around each other. This is why uh, the unity of the faith, this is why coming together is important because the breath, the breath, the air that we give to one another just in our very presence awakens us. And he says he was world conscious, he was, he was uh, surroundings conscious, but until he got breathed into, that's when he became God conscious. And so when Adam was made, but was he was functional until he received the breath of God. And we don't want to be just another person. We don't want to be just another person in this life. We want to be, we want to be living souls, just like you became a living soul. We want to become a living soul for the kingdom of God. Well, what is a living soul? Because we understand there's so many things and projections of what soul, because the Bible says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. In other words, when you put your soul to the side so that you can do all these other things that are not of God or, or maybe they're fun things, but they're not God things, that what profit is that? You can't take it with you, but your soul will be with you for eternity. A living soul is always more conscious of God than anything else in this world. So you get to think about resuscitating a soul because when there's a missing, when when it can sit in the presence of God and sit in the worship of God and, and not be moved and not be touched and not, you know, it's like, is my soul, what, what's, what's going on with my soul? And you go back and you pray, God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. There's joy in the salvation from heaven. In Psalms chapter 62 and verse 5, it says, My soul wait thou only God, uh, thou only upon God, 
for my expectations is from him. So God has called us to serve him and to serve others, to serve others. You, so again, you can't just say, well, all I need is just me and God. Well, Adam could have said that because it was just him and God, but yet God created Eve. And, 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 and so one of the things God didn't call us to do this to be alone because he said, it's not good for man to be alone. And again, that can't be the belief because God made it clear in the word in first John, how can you say you love me who you can't see and not love the people you can see? How can you say you're dwelling and have visitations with me who you can't see, but won't dwell and visitate with those you can see? If you are really having an encounter with God, visitations from God, you're going to want to encounter others so that you can be a blessing to them. Genesis 12, 2, we are blessed to be a blessing. If you're really having these encounters with God, God didn't tell you to encounter him so you can fill up for yourself. He wanted us to fill up with him so we can go give to others, just like he did with the disciples, bring me the little boy's lunch so we can bless it and break it. All right. It's got to be broken so it could be distributed. If you are the one who sits up in the room and saying that, hey, I, I don't need to be around this. I don't need to. Listen, that is not scriptural. That is not biblical. And that's the one of the deals. Like it would be the thing where God would want you to be a part of a group of praying, a group of corporate anointing, of being a part of a fellowship that we draw together and, and do great things in the name of Jesus. Serve with diligence. And in, in Matthew 25 verse 40, he says, when you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to Jesus. We serve with diligence, which is the immediate attention to an assigned task. Immediate attention. Give it your best attention. Give it your first attention. Give God your first attention. Pray and live with expectation of good. To truly benefit from the fact we know God is everywhere, we must be willing to submit to God at any time. So if I know he's everywhere, why wouldn't I submit to him at any time? It is he, it, it is he, it is he the courage. It, it is courage to surrender completely to the lordship of Jesus that empowers us to walk in the supernatural. Can't read my own stuff. It takes courage, but it's a powerful thing when they when your boldness is being seen. That courage passed down is being seen, and when we completely surrender to the lordship of Jesus, that helps us to walk in the super, supernatural. It is time to live like we want. Uh, the power of God to move in this life. Live like we want the power of God to move in this life. Our corporate fast, and what's happening right now, you join in at any time, you can go online, you can look at all the different types of fasting, different ways to do it, Daniel fast, different things. We just want you to be a part. We just want uh, to, to, to build the army of God and then build the, the love of God so strong that, that the one thing they'll leave this month talking about is how many breakthroughs, how God moved. And so look at this, the corporate fast and faithfulness to God is living beyond holding the salvation title, but rather storming the gates of hell to see God's deliverance. Staying connected during this fast is what will bring deliverance from the grips of brokenness. You are going to be the deliverer. Don't get broken in the process. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, that we lean not to our own understanding. We trust in you in all of our ways. And Father God, we get our understanding directly from you. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing this message as we go forward and we apply it in our lives. We thank you for the corporate fast. We believe that we're going to receive that this kind, only these certain kinds come out through prayer and fasts. fasting. We believe it's going to be a delivery month. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.